Welcome, Devin. Come on up. Uh, got a few minutes before we get started. Hi, here. yes, it's Devon. By the way, Devon. Um, question: uh, What is this uh, podcast going to be talking about? Because I'm new to the Corium community, I have a lot of questions that I wanted to ask. Oh, well, sure, you came to the right place. Uh, I'll explain a little bit further how how the format for the the podcast in general will be moving forward. But today. Um, we're going to be focusing on Corium punks and, um, but it's, it's just going to be ran as a, uh, as a typical X space. So there's going to be plenty of opportunity to, uh, just come up and, and have a chat, ask questions. Uh, there's no, there's no agenda, no script, no, no set questions. So, uh, yeah, if you stick around, there'll be plenty of opportunity to ask any questions. Um, but the, the focus, I guess, for the topic is uh, Corey and Punk's off the bat, and then after that, it'll be a free-for-all. Okay, thank you. Uh, welcome, Articulate. I'm going to invite you up here for a minute, too, before we get started. Hey, Chris. How's it going? Good afternoon, everyone. Really good. Glad you can join us. Uh, exciting update on, on your account today. I see, and I already had... Headed over to um, OmniFlix Market there to see uh, you dropped dropped an NFT there. I'm on the white list. I should be anyways. Haven't verified yet, but I should be on that white list. Yes, sir. You should be able to actually go ahead and um, get your NFT. Um, yeah, you sh- you sh- I did all the accounts that interacted. So, yeah, everyone should be able to get their NFTs. And then next week, Sunday, I open it up to the public. That's awesome. I did listen to it, so yeah, I'm excited. Uh, uh, you have you have it as an auction format moving forward. Is that is, did I understand that right? Yeah, so it's an auction format, and then um, it's going to be a set price next week. It's, so this is the cheaper um, option um, right now for those who are listed, and then it's going to be a little more next week. Nice. Well, for those of you just joining us, we're going to get started here right away. But uh, Articulate has a channel, uh, as do I, over on Omniflix. Dot TV, and uh, it's interactive uh, content there. I obviously do video, Articulate does music, um, but you can interact with these uh, medias, and uh, it's an exciting exciting platform. They do have a validator on the Corium network, so it is somewhat relevant to our ecosystem, even though it's their, their own blockchain. Um, it operates on, on Flix tokens. But uh, yeah, it's great to see you over there, and I'm excited. I, I will later today be going to to uh, check out your NFT once I connect my wallet. And uh, the other cool thing for supporting uh, content creators is uh, when I give Articulate a tip, as big or small as it is, it goes 100% into his wallet directly. And uh, if there's any uh, division on his end, I think he can set it up that it can be sent uh, as royalties to different sources too. If, if he did a collab with somebody, for example. Uh, yeah, lots of exciting things coming from from Omniflix. So we, we'll get started here right away, but I just definitely wanted to uh, uh, mention Articulate's project because that's what this channel is all about is uh, sharing uh, our community's efforts with the, with the broader community because we've got a lot of exciting things happening here. Thank you, Chris. Okay, well, I think we'll uh, get started. Anyways, welcome. This is uh, week two, podcast number two of the Super Ledger podcast. Started this um, podcast oh, about uh, eight weeks ago now, and uh, last last week we decided to uh, formalize it into uh, what we call in the Super Ledger podcast, and and it was based on a a, a great concept from the the Corium Sologenic team there with the the Super Ledger hashtag that they were talking about because it encompasses everything our community is about obviously the corium network the xrp ledger iso 222 community related projects there and then obviously the ibc which connects us to a lot and um, it's been a lot of volume passing over the ibc network just in the last month i think it's nearing two hundred thousand dollars um, so that's a lot of flow that we never had just just a few weeks ago. So um, yeah, that's what this channel's about. Uh, bring those communities all together, have a common space to to share ideas, projects, 
and successes, losses and governance, all kinds of things to talk about. So we will have some sort of a structure. It's like last week was kind of a introduction community space. Uh, so week one of the, the month, we'll do that. Just community forum, basically. Week two, be uh, focusing on creators and projects on, on these networks. Today's going to be Corey and Punks. And uh, week three, we'll highlight uh, developers and builders on the uh, Corium network. And uh, week four, we'll talk uh, validators and governance. And then obviously, this is uh, going to be ran as like an X space format. So there'll be plenty of open forum afterwards to ask any questions or general discussion or just wander off into the weeds about something else completely. So thanks everybody for joining me. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get into it here. So yeah, as I said, uh, next week, we're going to be talking about developers and builders on the podcast. So happy to announce already that uh, Mark from RiseNFT.com is going to be here. He still can claim as the first and only project and NFT marketplace on the Corium network. A beautiful platform he's building. And it's uh, it's a platform far beyond the the NFT marketplace. There's a, there's a whole community uh, plan that he has there that uh, is quite quite robust and I'm looking forward to having him on to talk about that currently has a promotion on for a hundred free NFTs given away this month. And those are NFTs he bought up off the floor of the community with the uh, validator fees that he's gained. So great community partner. So looking forward to having him on next week. Um, but yeah, like I said, the Corium punks is a the theme this week. Have some exciting things to announce. Um, don't have any dates yet, but we're, we're hoping we're nearing being able to uh, move the Corium Punks to the Corium mainnet. So as that's approaching, we, we're just uh, working on updating the white paper and how that's all going to look moving forward. So just want to uh, talk to the community a bit and let you guys know what we had planned there. Um, so excited to announce that 100% of the sales from the Corium mainnet Punks will be being staked 50-50 to the Corium Community DAO Validator and the Evolutions Validator. And that's going to quickly increase the rewards for the Punks ecosystem in its entirety. Uh, as previously promised, those with the XRP L Punks will be getting that one-to-one -one mainnet mint. Yeah, it's uh, like I said, we don't have any dates. We're at the mercy of uh, waiting for the technology to be ready and able to handle that load. It's a big project. Um, even the, the XRP Ledger and Sologenic had had uh, some, some strains there. We sold out those collections pretty fast uh, every time. Their first one was, was under an hour. I think the first two were under an hour. So uh, we definitely want to make sure the infrastructure is ready for that. And, and Rise has certainly been working hard to, to try and get that ready for us. So um, it's coming. And uh, a lot of exciting things are happening. Uh, the early uh, delegators for the Corium Community DAO, excited to say we took a snapshot. They will be getting a, a special NFT from us here that will enable them to get a Corium Punk on the uh, Corium mainnet with that NFT. So that'll be some uh, rewards just for helping us out, getting our validator up and running early. We really appreciate all that early support. What else we got on the punks list? Uh, and speaking of that, um, the we're, we're trying to build community up uh, around the Corian Punks project. Another change that's going to be happening here in the days ahead is the Discord will be moving from its current location to the Corium Community DAO uh, Discord. Uh, links are provided there. Marco, if you can maybe toss up the, the link tree there. Um, yeah, it would just uh, make it a little bit easier for us to to uh, create some engagement with the community. And, and like I said, we've got a lot of changes and additions coming here in the weeks and months ahead. So it's just going to be easier for us as a team to get that information out to the community. So, yeah, I think currently I uh, might get uh, NFT Evolutions rep to come up here, but I think we got around 41,000 Corium currently staked from the secondary sales uh, from the XRP Ledger punks. So that's what's uh, generating the current rewards that have been going out. And then, yeah, that was the other thing that's come up with the punks is uh, people not setting their trust lines on the XRP Ledger for 
for the rewards on that end for the Corium Trust line. So make sure you get that done if you're holding some punks over there. I think that's about it for my update on the Corium punks. I don't know, is, uh, I threw Crystal a, a mic there. She doesn't accept it yet, but yeah, I don't know, Marco, am I leaving anything out? Yeah, so for the punk NFTs, for the early delegators, this is going to be a special NFT. So just be on the lookout for that, guys. Yeah, Marco's worked uh, really hard on that. I'm pretty excited to see when that rolls out. Uh, yeah, we'll just be dropping that to, uh, to our early supporters' wallets there. So, uh, again, there'll be more more announced on that in, in Discord. And there's going to be some further utility added to these punks uh, in the days and weeks ahead. And that'll definitely be the place to keep up to date with that. Trying to see, there's Mac. He's trying to get up here, so I, I won't pressure. I threw her mic. She didn't want to come up. That's fine. I'll leave her alone. <laughs> Not for long. We're gonna harass Crystal before this is over. She's got some numbers that she can shoot at us. I told her that you know we'll, we'll be easy on her, but she's so good with the numbers that you know people people need to hear it. So we'll give her like you know we'll give her maybe what 15 seconds is all, Crystal, and then. Two, two minutes, I was going to say. Oh, that. yeah, we don't know. She had a rough night. <laughs> she can she can spit some numbers for 15 or 20 seconds and uh, and, and amaze everybody with her uh, with what she does. I think she left completely. <laughs> <laughs> she is amazingly asleep. Oh, that's hilarious. She's like, nah. <laughs> that girl never sleeps. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> the full disappearance so anyway uh, no numbers today <laughs> if i uh, understand correct a good lot of you that were in uh mexico there left uh not feeling too well there so i don't know if that was the tequila or the water but is everybody everybody back to 100 percent health are you guys still um, still walking around a little sore? Uh, i think uh a lot of us are, are, you know, mostly through it. Um, I'm finally like, you know, 90%, I'd say. Uh, but it's it was rough. Yeah. I actually got sick twice. And I got sick once while I was there for like three days. Fever, burning up. Got better. Got to the airport. Got back home. Stayed at the hotel. Drove back the next day. It was good. Slept in my bed. Woke up. And I was done down and out for an over a week again it was crazy yeah that's about got me on the second spin the first one i missed the three-day thing but i got the full week the day after i got home from uh two days at, actually the same as you the same time frame airport so it took me one full day uh, back to home after going through the airport so i definitely for me i definitely got it in the airport i got whacked in the airport yeah so yeah, I mean, I know that's the deal. Every time I go through one, no matter where I go, um, you know, it's in a matter of days, same symptoms every time. And, um, you know, again, this is, you know, we bring this up a lot, but, you know, we're going to start putting some of this EMF stuff together so we can all be protected when we travel. Hell yeah. All right, on Articulate, thanks for sharing that about the uh, the punks there. And uh, feel free to share your, your link up to... Uh, OmniFlix there too, if you haven't already. Um, important for everybody to see that. And a couple of announcements. I, I just looked at my notes here. I should have that when I was rambling on there. But uh, a couple of big things happened this week. So for for me, my channel uh, just reached 1,000 subscribers. So that's activated uh, a big NFT prize release that I'm about to do uh, December 10th. I think yeah, sun, next Sunday. Uh, be rolling that out. Uh, same time this week, uh, Zen Lounge hit 10K uh, on his YouTube channel. So um, the theme is like, you know, it's a good sign. We're, we're these, this uh, community is growing. It's growing pretty fast, in fact. Yeah. So a lot of uh, a lot of positive momentum. And starting uh, Bob and the team dropping carpet bombs. Yeah, that starting, was pretty exciting this it's week. starting to grow together too, which is really great to see. Yeah, yeah, and that uh, the Solo Nation podcast uh, with the team there has a lot of, a lot of uh, good info in there too from the team. So it's great. There's a lot more communication coming out from the team. You can certainly see a, a renewed push to uh, to get the word yeah, out. Yeah, went back and it's and it's paying off. Yeah, I went back and listened to that. It was amazing. It really was great. So yeah, for those of you that are subscribed to my channel. Um, Next week, uh, it'll probably be in the evening after the, the podcast here. Uh, I will be having uh, 
a live stream to uh, distribute those NFT prizes to the lucky winners because it's going to be uh, it's going to be good. Like a lot of those NFTs are paying pretty good rewards. I'm, I got a pretty good list. I was starting to go through just the ones I had in the one XRP wallet there last night, and I had uh, one that huge green candle. I owed him one. Uh, we had problems transferring there for a while so i got him squared away so i didn't accidentally give his away in the in the draw here so so yeah getting everything set up and i have a nice little collection in the last year went from from one bpm nft to uh quite quite the list in multiple wallets it seems yeah good stuff and um when you do that giveaway i do have a couple of um of punks to add to that so whenever you know it's time let me know yeah, I do have a, a couple days this week to prepare for all that because uh, I do have a lot of contributors. I'm, I'm very blessed and, and thankful. Um, I know uh, several in the room here have, have offered uh, the same. So I will be getting in touch with you guys to not just uh, get the NFTs in the wallet, but also just uh, just to get everything listed so I can give you guys proper proper thanks when we do that live stream next week because i really do appreciate it yeah yeah me too chris if you need any for this round i got a bunch and if not we can i can donate a bunch uh for the 2000 for the next round too nice yeah thanks everybody uh for all the support we really appreciate it um it's been overwhelmingly positive um so just thanks again yeah, and another another project that I'm trying to support too. Uh, I just did a video, just trying to support the technology more than anything to highlight the power of it. Um, I did a recent video with uh, Chris from Fight Farm, Flix Bets there, um, where you can um, peg an NFT to a fighter in the December 16th UFC fight. Um, the the interview is on YouTube as it normally would be, but I also posted it on Omniflix.tv on my channel there. And on there, if you leave a tip, uh, 100% of those tips I will put in the prize pool for that fight, uh, December 16th. So like two days before the fight, whatever is there for tips, I'm going to contribute to his prize pool for that fight. So uh, just to, as a cool way to show the power of what OmniFix is building over there more than anything, because we all have a uh, Cosmo station or Kepler or whatever thing already because of our Corium. Uh, so it's easy to interact with anything IBC related. And that's just one example is OmniFlix. So I just want to encourage everybody to, to check that out because they're, they're building something pretty special over there. I see Ralphie's here. Thank you for joining us. I see uh, you had an interaction with Zeev there. I'm, I'm looking forward to Maybe get them on your uh, your show there. I'd certainly love to see that. Uh, looks like a good discussion shaping up there, if it does happen anyways. Camo, feel free to come up and speak. I think we got bad time zone with you. I've tried bringing you up a few times on these spaces, and, and you're here, but I can never catch you speaking. Yeah, hello. How are you doing, guys? Hey, Camo. There he is. Good, good. good. It's almost 11.24 p.m. here in Saudi Arabia right now. Yeah. But, uh, inshallah, we are going to see some nice movements of Corium. Yes, sir. Uh, Pride, inshallah. Uh, and uh, I got to wake up very early. I'm just listening to you guys, and you give my big support. Yeah. Inshallah. And... Uh, just hodl, guys, and pack as much as you can because I think this is the last time you see the nine cents for Corey. Yeah, you're right. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, we may see like a small dip, yeah. but, you know, regardless, buy what you can while you can. That's, you know, that's what I, I say too. So at this price, you can't make Yeah, and another, another thing that... Uh, uh, I'm gonna run the first validator for the Korean blockchain here in Saudi Arabia and in the Middle East. Congratulations! So um, wow, congrats! Thank bro. you, thank you, guys. It's gonna be for you. huge, well deserved. Yeah, it's gonna be in Arabic and English language. So I appreciate that. our community <laughs> can can recognize the name of the logo. You got what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it looks like so. Yeah, what I'm trying to read. So I do appreciate that very much. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'll I'll post to you a hint of of the logo so you can see it since you started this this space. It's gonna be called Buruj. Uh Buruj is uh, an Arabic uh, word actually. Uh it means in English uh, what do you call it? Uh, the the uh, con, 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 how is it? How do how do you pronounce it? Let me try to find out the pronunciation for it because I'm not conqueror. You know. Conqueror. What conqueror? That was just a guess. Oh. <laughs> uh, right, Conquista. No. Let me try. There you go, man. Conquistador. Yeah, I'm just throwing words out now. Me <laughs> too. Uh, I'll try to. It starts with with C, but yeah, constellations. Constellation. Constellation. Yeah, constellations. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Like a star constellation. So, yeah. So I added the uh, Cosmo Station uh, or Cosmo uh, blockchain to the logo. I added XRP. I added Corium and Sologenic to it. So it's going to be beautiful logo, inshallah, with the validator. Awesome, awesome. Congrats again. Thank you. Great to have you on board. Thank you. Long overdue. Thank you. Long Thank overdue. You. But glad to have you. Thank you so much. Yeah, and uh, Camel, you know, you're always welcome on my channel anytime uh, you want to announce your, your validator there to the community. This platform, my platform, whatever you need, it's there for you. Really really appreciate all the work you do in the community getting the word out and and uh getting everybody pumped up for corium it's uh it's always always brings a smile on my face watching your posts yeah, me too. and discord too right i mean it, this is maybe a little or too early to talk about this but uh you know uh we were talking about having a validator section coming up so um you know you're obviously more than welcome to join that as well Yeah, I want to let everybody know, um, those who haven't heard previously, we, we want to create kind of a hub for resources at the uh, Core and Community DAO Discord there. So there's a spot there if, you, if you're running an NFT project or a validator um, or just a private business, something you do in real life, place to put up your business card, separate channels for all those things. And uh, if that's even just a link to your Discord or your web page or whatever it is, it's just meant for, you know, if somebody's over on our platform and wants to check out uh, what you're doing, it's just an easy hop, skip, and a jump away. So anything you need there, uh, Saucy's your guy. He should be joining us here shortly, I think, hopefully for an update on the Discord. But, uh, yeah, it's there for you guys to use. We're open to ideas. If you think there's a feature we can add or something we can do it's it's i mean it's just all meant to be for the community so we're just trying our best to uh to get the foundation built and and have something there for everybody to utilize absolutely and you know what a great idea by the way chris um you know that way everybody can just have their own thing they can you know reach anything that they need to from any you know any platform any link tree and you know easy access to whatever they want yeah, and even for some validators that don't have a website or exactly. uh, uh, a Discord, you know, it gives them an opportunity to have a place to to get their message out. Because as we move forward and governance becomes more important, communication is going to be more uh, more important, and and it's going to need to be. Uh, you need, it's, we're going to have to have ways to easily reach the community for governance issues that arise. Like you can just look at other ecosystems and especially Cosmos and the governance issues that they deal with. And uh, communication is a big part of it. Just everybody needs to understand what's going on where it's a community blockchain. We've been airdropped all these tokens, but at the same time, we've been airdropped the responsibility to to hopefully build this chain into into a success story. You know, obviously the team's doing the the uh, the back end work there, but it's up to the community too to uh, you know, participate in the governance. And when you're delegating with your validator, it's, you know, it's uh, nice to get uh, maximum rewards, but, you know, uh, slight percentages, you know, is one thing, but, you know, make sure you're you're delegating somebody that's, you know, supporting the, the blockchain, you know, we're participating in the governance. You know, these are important things. Um, you know, you have uh, 
validators not voting and stuff like that, it's kind of a disservice to the whole chain. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be important for everybody to talk about that moving forward. So have a space to do yeah, it. So if you're going to be delegating, um, you guys all know this already, but obviously, you know, delegate with somebody that's going to vote. Yeah, I did two, two, two hour live streams. Well, it's gone back a month or so now. So, because I think at that time there's only like 40 some validators. I kind of went through them one by one, um, you know, just to see what they're, what they're offering and what they're doing, what they're, um, fees are that kind of thing because it varies a lot. You know, there's some validators that it's 100 percent commission. So I mean, if you randomly delegated there, but you know, oh. you're, you're not going to be doing so well there. But uh, you know, it's just important to have have that resource. Not everybody goes to like I use Smart Stake Analytics, you know, uh, page. So there you go. That's a validator on our network. They have a staking service they provide, but they in turn provide our, our community a, a great tool to to monitor um, our blockchain that's what i use on my my shows regularly there and um you know it's just an easy way to see what's what's going on with the, the whole network other other chains are offering incentives of, of different sorts uh, some don't offer any uh, some some are building uh, projects so it's quite the variety so i guess i'll, I'll have to do another one uh, soon, I guess, uh, seeing as we've got a bunch of new ones, probably about 10 new ones since I last did it. Mm. Oh, yeah, so... Uh, Devin? Oh, go ahead. oh, sorry, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. I just seen Devin with your hand up, uh, just open forum here, no structure. We're just all here to chat as a community. Oh, Come on Okay, up. yeah, I, uh, so my question is, I've recently asked, have somebody asked me if I wanted to run a node on Aquarium? So I wanted to get more information on what is the benefits of running the node. Well, I mean, as I was talking about there, securing the blockchain is is the primary function of that running the validator. Um, I guess with the idea that you know, if you're a long term uh, participant in the ecosystem, then uh, it might be a good thing to do. Uh, from my experience, I I, I don't run the um, the tech myself, we use Ziv as our partner for that. Um, I'm not, uh, technologically inclined, I guess you could say, um, they have a very user friendly service. I think it took me only 15 minutes to, uh, to spin up a, a validator node there, but, uh, it's, it's kind of like a, a low code system but they they have a great system i i have full confidence in what they're doing they don't do any shared nodes um does it know, and uh oh yeah yeah that there's a cost to it for sure um definitely not making money uh running a validator on corium right now at that at, at these uh prices i mean you need a um pretty large community delegating on your your network to to be running profitable at at these prices but um, I'm here for the long term, so I'm more more about you know what's it going to be in five years. You know, it's kind of how I look at it. So it's just uh, an investment and a way to participate in my end. And and we're we're using ours as part of the Core Community DAO. So the idea is to take the the fees uh, revenue generated from the validator and uh, and put that into into a treasury for the DAO and have the community. Um, you know, through governance, um, distribute that properly so to help benefit our community, whether it's through uh, a grant for a project or education or uh, different different initiatives the community wants to involve, you know, through governance. And so just uh, just kind of tiptoeing through the, the legalities of DAOs at the moment, trying to sort that out, have kind of a living white paper on the website. And, and uh, I think it's up in Discord there too. So we're obviously entertaining input from the community there's a lot of smart minds in our community far smarter than me so uh you know if anybody's got any ideas uh input uh, they're more than welcome we're all ears i uh i stepped into the space a couple minutes late um uh, did we um did we remind everybody to set their corium trust lines if they hold uh corium punks right now yeah yeah i did okay yeah. sorry about that then yeah, you guys seen uh, this month there, they noticed there was quite a few that uh, weren't set. So I think they, they resent it out after another 24 hours or something like that. Didn't yeah, they? yeah. 
We've done that a couple of times. Just want to make sure everybody that owns a punk gets that trust line set, gets that uh, that free airdrop that's coming. And speaking of airdrops, I think it should be addressed. Uh, there is, I've had several people ask me, so I, I'll use this uh, time to address it too. There's rumor going around that uh, based on Bob's announcement of the uh, the airdrop for the uh, Sologenic holders, um, that's all it was as far as I know. There is no criteria or discussion of if snapshots were done or will be done or no discussion of minimum holdings required i think that was all just a a rumor started on x as usual i think so i uh, just want to throw caution out there to people in the community if you're stumbling across that that's not factual as far as i know how about that uh, what was that, sorry? I said, how about that thread from Bob Ross? That's like <laughs> mm-hmm. super bullish. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Eh? Like, just uh, <laughs> where do you start with that? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, as long as I've been waiting for news on the airdrop, it, it really, that was like the least of my concerns in that thread. So much uh, interesting things to take out of there, for sure. Um we, particularly, do you think uh, you think we're going to see something uh, before the end of the year, or do you think that's just uh, getting us ready for Q1, Q2? I mean, in the thread, especially the listings, he did mention in a few weeks and the month of December. So, um, you know, I went and I looked at the Corium official who they're following, and they're following Binance as an exchange. They're following Polynex. So it's like. You know, there's some, um, <laughs> I don't know if those are indications or not, but, you know, um, they gonna. They even mentioned bridging to Binance and AFAX as some of the first bridges apart from the XRP also. You know, there may be something there with regards to listing. So that's, you know, more immediate than not the DEXs, you know, the DAOs. Like, there's a lot coming um, in terms of what he said, weeks, you know, and, and the months following. So... You know, I think this is just going to be the kickoff to going into the the Q1, you know, starting the bull run in next year. So I think there's a lot of things coming that has been in the works that they've been cooking. They haven't been speaking much, but, you know, when they do speak like that, it's it, it's a lot at once. So, you know, the, the pilot with the ISO, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot going on right now. So looking forward. It does. Now, uh, that I... I I swear in my mind that ISO story is, is just being missed by, by everyone. Like the ISO community is just not even listening to that. And to me, it's, to me, it's the biggest ISO news I've covered in years. Like, you know, I've known the ISO dates coming and what it's supposed to do. And I didn't have the, the expectations of this magic date. Everything was going to flip and be different. Um, you know, so it was only when they started talking about this ISO and I started looking into the trade header and what they do, I was like, hold oh, this is something completely different compared to just your regular ISO conversation. They're actually building infrastructure to handle ISO payments. That's that's something completely different. Can you can you uh shed more light on that? I, I wish I could. Uh I wish I could. They're they're rolling out a um a beta here uh between two, I think, two financial companies uh, here in the short to near term. Um, I've just speculated based on uh, partnerships that they've announced previously. Uh, they they quickly mentioned uh, um, Trade Header as uh, somebody they were working with a couple months ago. Nobody really talked about it a whole bunch. I went and looked at their website and quickly realized that something's going on here. Like they actually... Uh, create the ISO standards or, or provide a lot of input into those uh, standards. Um, they work with the ISDA for like 30 years. Um, they're not really out there saying they're making partnerships with crypto companies in any way. Um, and there isn't much on on the Corium uh, deal that they have. I don't know if Corium's just utilizing their services or if there's actual partnership or if that's one of the people that's partnered that's going to be uh, utilizing the Corium network for these transactions. I'm just speculating it has something to do with trade header. I've done a couple videos on it, 
But to me, the ISO community has completely dropped the ball on this story because I think it's going to turn out to be something pretty spectacular. Oh, so I, I welcome no, anybody sure. from the team to come up and, and clarify any of that because, like I said, most of that is my speculation. What up, Chris? So um, during Soul Donation Space the other day, um, and I was I, I referenced a, que a question and Fabio actually answered it as to what exchanges we could be looking at. And the key thing that I took from his response, he said it was a top 20 exchange. If we look right now where Corium's listed, Mexi, pretty good exchange. I would say I don't trust them for specific reasons, but they are pretty big. Obviously, Gate.io. But if we look on coin market cap and you look at the top 20 exchanges, obviously, I think everybody wants Binance. Will we get Binance? I'm not sure. But one, two, and three is Binance, Coinbase, and Kraken. Um, if we could get on any of those, that would be amazing. However, let's look at four through 20. We got some names that pop out. KuCoin, Bybit, OKX, BitGet. Those are all exchanges that push a lot of volume coming from somebody that used to uh, day trade every single day crypto. I know what exchanges push volume and which ones don't. Um, BitGet would be huge. Bybit would be huge. Even KuCoin would be huge. A lot of people use those exchanges and that would be a ton of eyes uh, on Corium. 11 through 20 has crypto.com. Um, I think if we see crypto.com, I think Coinbase isn't out of the question either. I think that those two exchanges usually uh, go hand in hand whenever they, they start listing um, coins or tokens. Um, other than that, I think those are my picks for the top 20. Obviously, there's other exchanges in the top 20. Some I'm not familiar with and some are a little sketchy to me. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at when it comes to uh, where Corium could potentially be listed this month. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I never really looked at that on that breakdown. I haven't done any trading in a long time. And, you know, exchanges aren't my my place to store crypto. So I understand it's necessary. I understand it's going to have a very positive impact on on the entire uh, project and, and the velocity of, of the token itself. Um, but yeah, I just haven't spent much time looking at that list. That's interesting. Yeah, uh, crypto.com would be huge. Um, obviously, Coinbase just for number of users. I always thought Binance would be an easy one. Just uh, like Sologenics uh, got a bridge to the BAB chain already. Yeah, yeah, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see what what happens there, Chris. I actually didn't know you were part of the Corium Punks team. I'm learning a lot this week. Over the last week, I've learned a lot about some of the shifts that have happened uh, with personnel and teams that have broken up and kind of other people that have come together. So I apologize that I'm late to the to to the no, but I I didn't actually know. I know that you used to that you've always mentioned Corey on punks and, and whatnot, but I didn't know you were actually part of the team. Well, uh, the the team kind of took me in under their wing, I guess. I I talk a lot. Maybe they they like my use me as a mouthpiece or something. Maybe, but uh, no, it's. Uh, uh, it's a great project. I'm really excited for it, and and um, I've I've been eager to to incorporate it in in some way with with what we're doing at the DAO here. Uh, it's a very tricky situation, obviously, and and you know again, I don't want uh, last thing I want like, I don't want anybody to have one XRP or Corium hurt in in participating in a DAO that uh, I have a hand in creating, even though it's meant you know it's a community creation, but. I'm just trying to plant the seeds here. So I just want to make sure I plant some good seeds, I guess. And um, yeah, it's, it's uh, exciting, but at the same time, uh, I've got to we'll walk around a few landmines here. And also, if I could ask, answer Devon. Devon, listen, it's worth it to run a validator. It's not easy. Um, there's certain things that you need to uh, be able to do. First of all, you got to be able to build community. You have to have people delegate on your validator. Um, Obviously, I also went with ZV um, for the reason being that they have 100% uptime. They take care of everything. It's almost plug and play. Uh, the the setup is is super easy. They walk you through everything. Um, I'm a little, I'm less smart than the average man, I would say. So actually, they reached out to me on Telegram, which guys, I do not use Telegram, but I have an account that I don't share uh, just because there's too many scams that happen there. But they actually jumped on a call with me and everything and kind of walked me through everything, helped me set up everything. Um, it was kind of seamless. It was it was very easy. Yes, there's a fee you have to pay every single month. And at the beginning, you will not you will run 
you're not going to be in profit. But the goal is to actually grow your community and grow the delegation that you have. And mind you, um, for anybody listening, you don't have to delegate uh, all your Corium on one validator. You can kind of spread it out and help decentralize the actual um, the, the validators, which is something that I think everybody should do. Um, but yeah, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. And if you're willing to build community and kind of um, participate in the network, yeah, just know that you do have to participate because I think I've gotten uh, uh, so busy with building in the space that sometimes you you forget that you know you're, you're supposed to be voting and whatnot. But um, can you send me the information? Pretty, uh, yeah, go ahead. C- can you send me the information? Yeah, I got you. Um, yeah, I could I could DM you that. And w- which, by the way, I, I yeah, Chris, I kind of uh, got into it with ZV a little bit there. I'm I'm highly against CBDCs. I I I find it hard to find a uh, a good use case for them, other than I don't know. I I I would love to have that conversation with them. And obviously, it that conversation would be about blockchain as well. I'm a blockchain maxi. I would say I don't I don't like to be like oh I'm an XRP guy or I'm a Corium guy or I'm a Bitcoin guy. No, I, I got into crypto because I love blockchain. I, I like I like the possibility of what blockchain offers. Um, I do have my my special picks though within that blockchain. But yeah, uh, I digress. Yeah, Ziv uh, partner that like we use their technology also, but they're also a partner of my my channel Corium Concepts. And for anybody out there who wants to uh, learn more about them, uh, get in touch with Ralphie, me. Um, the the team's very easy to approach, and uh, they have a deal with us. Uh, if you tell them that we sent you uh, and you use their services, uh, a portion of that will actually feed back into the Aquarium community DAO. So um, if you're thinking of using Zeev, make sure you mention our name because they'll... Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, contribute to our yeah. community. If you can say and, anybody inbox me that, I definitely will. I'll get to that right now. And and you had a right great stat that you brought up earlier, Chris, if you want to share it with everybody uh, about, um, you know, how the time, if you know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't want anybody um, getting wrecked out here. And, you know, so I'm, I'm usually very uh worried about you know are we doing everything right and, and i i press z pretty hard you know like what's our uh you know fail you know if something fails what how's everything look and and i was you know really pressing them on redundancy you know if it goes down like should i have a second validator and blah 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 so what what i got from my inquiries is the uh and this they didn't specifically tell me this part but uh what I did figure out in combination with what they told me is basically a validator would have to be down for about seven and a half hours to get jailed currently. So the protection we have with them is it's man 24 seven. And if I can spin up a node in 15 minutes, I'm sure their uh, team of engineers uh, can, can do it a lot quicker. So uh, seven and a half hours is a pretty big uh, amount of time. So then they did say like, you know, you got to be careful because if you're running a uh, uh, trying to run a redundant system where one validator fails and the other one comes online, if there's a double sign, that's actually a bigger penalty. And and that's a pretty hard one to recover from because it's instant, right? So it's not like you have any time to uh, prepare or deal with that problem. Whereas uh, seven and a half hours to deal with an issue is quite a bit of time in their, in their operation. So that gave me a lot of uh, confidence in what they're doing. Uh, the other thing that uh, I actually just had a great interview with Dr. Ravi, and unfortunately, I'm working with uh, Zoom or our cloud cloud recording of it. It's just uh, it's still in the cloud somewhere, but um, you know, he spoke. You know, I asked him quite a bit about the um, protection and 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 um, what sets them apart, I guess you can say, from others. And he said the one thing is whether you use Eve or anybody else is just a word of caution that he expressed to me was uh, some places use what's called shared node service. And uh, he, he really said, like, that's just taking shortcuts. And he says, so it might be a little bit cheaper, but uh, definitely a lot more prone to to problems. So, um, yeah, just one thing I, I would suggest I learned from them to to take uh, forward is is uh, maybe understand shared shared node services more than more than I do anyways. 
I think, I think a lot, everybody should know the ins and outs of that, obviously. Yeah. And, and that, to expand on what Ralph was saying, and I've, I've, uh, uh, preached it right from day one and that's why I spent the time to go through all the validators so I can say like yeah spread your delegation out amongst uh, three four five different validators to to minimize your risk to slashing you know because you know shit does happen um, you know at least if shit happens with one validator it doesn't impact your whole whole uh, holdings chance you know if the whole network goes down low nobody's gonna be able to point fingers at anybody in that case anyway so um, you know, that's just a good way to protect your holdings, but it's also the proper way to decentralize the network, right? And, and same thing, it's, uh, you know, some of the, the low fee validators are at the top of the list with a lot of voting power. Uh, maybe look at somebody down at the bottom of the list, you know, might uh, cost you one, two points on your percentage, but, you know, it, it keeps that voting balance uh, in check too. It's, we can't all just pile up at the top where the low fees are because that doesn't do the the network any favors either. I see Rise NFTs in the house. Uh, you weren't here earlier, but I did mention you will be joining us next week. Uh, you're obviously welcome up here anytime to uh, speak. I just threw you a mic. Yeah. I got a question. Is there a UNL list? For validators like uh, Ripple, no, no, okay. it works different. Uh, you, it's a different consensus. You, this is the 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 whole UNL thing was new to me. To be honest, when I was hearing uh, that whole uh, that whole thing going down, no, it, it's different here. You validators are incentivized on on Corium. It's, okay, they are incentivized. Okay, yeah, there's no incentive to run on XRP. Uh, there's no underlining incentive. The incentive that people have running on XRP is that they also have another business or something where they kind of throw their weight around. But no, there you are incentivized. You're earning rewards for validating the network and, and pushing what, through. What is Corium? Is it proof of stake? Like what is what is what is the consistency mechanism? It's proof of stake, I believe so. Right, Chris? Yeah. yeah I'm not crazy. Uh yeah, it's it's bonded proof of stake. Yeah. So so you're bonded talking tokens are yeah, it's uh, self custody, so you, you maintain control of your assets, but they're they're bonded. Uh, so if you try to remove your delegation, they're locked up for a period of seven days. Uh, so, before... with it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so with it being proof of stake, whoever has most of the token supply gets majority say. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it's all based on 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 governance. Yeah, vote per token. So, you know, validators get a vote. Uh, you as a token holder can vote on any governance issues. And uh, at this point, we haven't had much to, to vote on. We just voted to uh, expand the network four times. Uh, is like grow the validators to its current max at uh, 62. And uh, we had one governance to adopt uh, an update to allow the IBC uh, interconnection there. So. Do you know uh, how many validators um, Bob Ross and the Corium team have? Um, well, how they have uh, the team runs uh, for sure the ones that are like it's uh, Krypton, Argon, whatever those ones, those are team validators. Um, but other than that, like our big ones, top three, you have the exchanges, you have uh, BitTrue, Cosmos Station, Zen Lounge. Um, oh, uh, uh, validator. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, 007 Corium, he's up there. Macy and Foster, those are both community members, validators. Uh, yeah, that Smart Stake Analytics page is a good place to to go get all the stats real quick on on all the validators. Just real easy to see um, and compare them. Chris, I, I will also add there. Yes, they they might be affiliated with some validators. However, the Corium team has actually helped out a lot of validators as well with delegation. I'll just throw that little bit in there because they have. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The uh, Corian Foundation has absolutely helped out uh, community validators. I also had another question. I've been trying to get a lot of research on uh, Corium. I just bought a lot of Corium and I like what I'm seeing. So we know that to uh, David Schwartz said tokenization is coming to the XRP ledger. And for me, um, we know that you need to be KYC so that 
equal sologenic and anything positive for sologenic would be equal for equally good for corium. Am I mistaken on that? Uh, my logo has always been the uh, the Trinity. Yeah, I think they're all meant to work together. Um, I don't think we necessarily need to have a smart contract on the XRP ledger or on the XRP ledger. I'm not saying we won't or, you know, I wouldn't discourage it or anything, but I don't know that it's necessary. I think it's uh, important to run in its current state and be a hub of liquidity. And um, you can use I the think, smart contract. Corium on XRP ledger, right? That's well. That's what I mean. If you, as soon as you have a two-way bridge on and off the XRP ledger that connects you with IBC, with connects you with the Ethereum virtual machine, Avalanche, Polkadot, I mean, that's that's interoperability right there in my mind. What is IBC? I've been hearing that a lot. What is that? That's the uh, that's the um, what the Cosmos ecosystem. That's the interblockchain communication protocol that. Like even Cosmos says it doesn't have IBC enabled, but I think it will at some point. But um, it just makes it for a seamless way to communicate between any IBC um, enabled blockchain. Wait, wait a second. That means that Corium is doing interoperability there. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, we just uh, no way. In, in in the last month, uh, just about two hundred thousand dollars of IBC traffic has has went through uh, Corium. Chris, did you oh. see the? Michael made where he explains IBC where it's easy if if people spoke different languages it yes easy for people to commit it's easy for the blockchains to communicate I thought that video from Michael was great yeah exactly it's like a translator exactly you can uh, all these blockchains have their own language and it's just kind of deciphers that into a common language that we all understand oh and so. Devon, um, just quickly I think I see where you're going with the question about KYC and stuff um, Corium is also um, the blockchain that, that has the hybrid feature. So on one side, you could KYC. It has the ability for you to KYC for institutional purposes and governments and also decentralized for retail um, investors and retail purposes. So um, it does play both roles. Got you. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah I'm glad you said that because that's exactly what I was asking. Okay. So if, okay, so if Corium is doing interoperability, because I'm I'm seeing what you're saying now, this is the same, a similar use case, a use case to um, uh, Quant, right? Uh, I think Ralphie's more knowledge at Quant than me. So Quant is more of an overledger, and yet it will so solve some interoperability. However, it's it's more than just Quant. It, it's it's smart contract based. That's the difference, I would say. When you say smart, okay, so they're trying to they're trying to solve interoperability through a smart contract way. So no, okay, so Corium is a layer one, it is right. one and a layer one, but it's built on top of Cosmos layer zero, which what Cosmos is doing is solving that um, interoperability issue that th we see in crypto. So since Corium is built on top of Cosmos, it you it's automatically ad adopting the IBC. It's and automatically it's, adopting the IBC. Okay. So, yeah, so it's it's about the probability that you're going to be able to have from from chain to chain. So, and I and I believe this is where I might be mistaken. So please correct me if I'm misunderstanding this. But the uh, the big thing with that is there isn't a smart contract as as a bridge. The IBC is it's like the, a protocol that um, it. it it's kind of like you, it's 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 kind of like a mesh network, right? So they're, they're, I don't the way I understand it is it's not prone to a typical bridge hack. It's and then I know work. if if yeah, and if you add Corium and what it does, um, the the a lot of the smart like when you hear the smart token, um, a lot of the things that would be tied up in a smart contract, example your KYC um, and stuff like that, it's actually coded right into the token at its inception. So um, again, removing the the uh, possibility of exploit. So it's minimizing the need for a smart contract on top as much as possible. Plus you have insurance that can be caught into the token itself as well. So it covers any um, possibility of whatever may happen in you know, deploying that or using that technology. 
I see Rise has joined us. He's actually building. He's Rise is the only uh, project that is currently uh, up and running on the Corium Network, as far as I know. Um, so I'm sure he'd have some value to add to this conversation. Yeah, I've seen a, a couple really valid points with um, the Quant and Corium. The, the main difference is Quant, they're both involved, Quant and Corium are both involved in interoperability within the blockchain ecosystem. They, they approach it from different angles, though. Quant operates as a network layer that connects various blockchains, promoting a technology sort of agnostic approach, while Corium, on the other hand, is a specific blockchain platform focusing on performance and enterprise-grade solutions. Uh, they utilize the IBC, of course, as they said earlier, for interoperability within the, the Cosmos ecosystem. That's really it. That's the only main difference. So, yeah, like, you're going to... There's competition at bay but then you start looking at who are the who are the players in the ecosystem and then where's the money flowing to because technology can only go so far at, at certain times in our in our um, in our technological evolution as we progress it can only become so fast and so fast and who has their hands in that that cookie pot first um will be really a determining factor so when you go back to looking at Corium, who they are, who they're partnered with, which most of us here know they're partnered with Sologenic. How did Sologenic get their money? They got their money from the XRPL. Who are some people that just joined the Corium team? They all came from, you know, people from Ripple, XRPL, you know, kind of a, just a, a family making different ecosystem storefronts through different companies. And so Quant, on the other hand, they also have some different partnerships. I definitely haven't investigated the the flow of money or funds. They're definitely connected with a, a few different particles, but it's like who is uh, who is most related, who has the best connections and, and, and ties, and then just watching the money flow, watching where, where things go. And um, I, de I definitely see some uh, exponential growth in Corium coming soon with a couple of these uh, contracts that they sign. and. Um, as, as the validator set grows, um, I definitely see us finally getting over 50 or 60% locked in locked liquidity pretty soon. Yeah. I was actually wondering, like I, you know, I think I can't remember the exact number, but I think Cosmos ecosystem, like 60 some percent is locked up and I think, it's, I, think it's, I think it's 67 right now, but yeah, Corium's like 40 something and we definitely need to be, yeah, yeah definitely need to push it a little bit higher and disclose a lot of people worrying about a lot of people are worrying about cashing out micro rewards right now when this is like this is the time to be compounding most of your interest and you know and and, and letting that sit sure we might have a little bump up in the bull run so you know you peel a little bit off the side but compounding and restaking is like then you'll have I look at my compounding staking bag as my rental property you know I'm just investing in my rental property so my rental property produces more over time and then by the time that the, the run hits, it's only a seven day unlock period. You know, you'll, it's, you're only benefiting the ecosystem more and, you know, put, put greed to the side for a little bit and look at, look at our, our, our future as, uh, you know, as the, as the middle or, you know, middle, lower, upper class, whatever, whatever you are, look at, look at our future based on what decentralization will actually, will actually do for us. And then, it's it's a pretty exponential in terms of your decision making rather than just worrying about oh is it 5x or 10x or what's this like i'd rather have a highly secure decentralized ecosystem that we can all communicate freely on without being censored and then have other things happening i know corium's working on a few of those things with other projects with um highly secure messaging not just for enterprise grade great solutions but for the individual but also if you're an individual it's a lot smarter to operate as some sort of business entity. Open up, open up a business or a trust or a or a SPAC, which is a special acquisition fund in your name, and operate pretty much everything you do on a daily life through that, and then rename it as some sort of business. It's only it's only protecting you and keeping yourself separate from a lot of the, a lot more of the tyranny to come in these uh in these coming days and years here. So, I just stay on your toes. Well, and stay on your toes. The crazy thing that I'm looking at is we're at 47% locked up right now. 
and look at the liquidity. You know, if somebody makes a, a fairly large buy, price is moving. So, you know, imagine if we get to a 60%, that's locked up. Um, you know, that's to me, it's, you know, again, that's the benefit of only having 500 million tokens, but man, it's going to do interesting things for price movement with, uh, with such a low circulating supply out there. So, uh, do, does anybody know what the circulating supply was when Corium hit its all time high? Oh, well, it, it just, it just peaked at its all time as it, uh, as it dropped from an IOU token, um, or was when it dropped, I was I was one of those guys. Like when uh, Corium was first dropping, I set a buy order on the uh, on the XRP Dex for uh, I think it was nine dollars or something like that, just to say I was one of the first ones to buy Corium when it was available on the Dex there. So um, I think in the recent run up before the main net there got to eighty cents. Uh, but that would have been with uh, half of the supply out there. Yeah, I was going to say. I think his question was more just a half of. Yeah, it was about it was about two hundred or two hundred fifty million tokens roughly when it was its eighty something cents. Besides, it's that super high wick that it that it uh that it went to. But uh, yeah, about about half the supply at that cost. Oh, okay. Thank you. So, so if it was at half the, how much is out right now? Is the is it all released out? Yeah, it's like 500 and, 500 and a little bit more million because you have higher inflation right now. So um, the, the inflation will definitely stay higher until there's a little bit more network adoption, which, again, with all of the new <laughs> all of the new contracts that they've signed, as well as a couple of non-disclosures, as well as a couple of uh, letters of intent, there's um, I, I definitely see some pretty pretty wild adoption happening within the next six months. So inflation Wait, will be high. there for inflationary? If, well, yes. How do, how else would you receive rewards? Right. Right. So inflation is your reward rate. While as more tokens are locked and more people commit to the network, it'll lower the amount that you earn, say, monthly. But then there's also less Then then it's also a deflationary asset because it uses the token as what a as a burning mechanism throughout the network. So um as there's more adoption, then it'll burn faster. As it's more locked, then there'll also be a less APY. So being in now is just like same same thing as you know buying XRP at uh, at a quarter of a penny. You know, it's like there's always there's always a little a little plus and minus to the systems at first, but that's how you're rewarded. So I I, I see Corium going going down to um, you know 15, 20 percent, maybe even 10 percent over over the course of maybe two years. So it's like if you're in now and you're, you know, you're making that extra 30% at, at bottom of markets, what else, what else, uh, what else have you got to lose in, in the essence of, uh, of that valuation? But yeah, that's, that's how their inflation, inflation is crawl is, uh, is handled. But what was also cool is that that company, uh, Reaper, they also just added Corium to the list, which will also help burn Corium a little bit faster as, as Reaper becomes a little bit more well known in the ecosystem, um, you know, people can vote on to burn more Corium. So it's just like Corium can be burnt, Corium can be sent here, you know, da da da. So is it the same type of inflationary aspect as like a XDC or is it uh, like a Terra Luna inflationary aspect? Well, no, definitely not Terra Luna because Terra Luna was the, the, the type of contract there was back doors where they can, they can do whatever they want. They can mint however they could do all this. So, it's it's definitely not based on that. I'm not too familiar with the inflation on XTC. Um, so it would... XTC has a. Uh, I'm gonna do it roughly. Uh, you can they they have an inflation to pay the miners, but mm -hmm. um, whereas other networks, if you just vote on it, they can you can't necessarily double the supply overnight. Even if the vote goes through, it only has enough inflation to pay the miners and keep the infrastructure going. Yeah, that, that's basically that's basically what Corium. Their their white paper is actually very easy to read. That's basically what Corium is. It's, it's probably more similar to to XDC. Um, gotcha. Yeah. So we can't just vote and then double the supply of Corium. We can't do that. No, no. no. There's definitely yeah. They they definitely have some really good protocols. If you look at the team of of Corium, and you just look at some of these like the guys like their their level of not just how smart they are, but their level of in integrity to, you know, keeping shit real on, on every angle. You're like, I mean, it's, and, and, and he had like their, their AI team with like Rezo who used to run like a team of 20, 
you know, 20 different AI guys. Like, these guys are looking, you know, they're looking past corners that are, like, grandmaster test level. Like, you got 20, 30 moves ahead, and you're like, how the fuck are you even going that far ahead? But it's, it, yeah, it's, it's really amazing what some of the stuff that they're building over there. The way I understand it, too, the other component to the, like, the, the inflation is algorithmically set. So it, it is dependent, like... Uh, uh, Mark with Rise was saying there, based on the amount locked up, but the other factor is uh, transaction fees uh, generated by the network. So at this time, there's there's next to none. Like you go on the Explorer there and see the transactions, and uh, it's very few. It's just people claiming their rewards and and uh, and Mark at Rise NFT dot com and whatever they're doing over there. You know, so I think the the other part is too is once transaction fees start providing the i think the algorithm is more set to to the reward incentive for the validator so when, if the fees rise it can also drive the inflation down it's not just necessarily set to the amount locked up on the network though that's part of it and then last thing like you said there there is what's called a, a um i just looked it up it was a a controlled rate the rate of a new token creation the inflation is controlled and set as per the network's protocol to ensure it's not excessive. So yeah, we can't vote and be like, double the supply, triple the supply, we can't do any of that. Um, it's not like issues that Bitcoin I'm money- I'm sorry, could you start there from the beginning? You kind of broke up on my end. No worries, yeah. Con uh, it's called a controlled rate. The rate of a new token creation, the inflation, is controlled and set as per the network's protocol to ensure it, that it's not excessive. So it's not going to be, well, we, we can't double it. We can't triple it. There's, there's only, we can only vote to be like, oh yeah, let's increase inflation again to help spur some advertisement. Then it, if it's already at 27%, it, it might, I think it has a cap at 30% or it has, there's, there's, there's cap rates where it'll, it'll, it'll allow it to go so far. So, um, yeah, it's definitely, definitely thinking ahead of the like curve. That. Yep. 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 I like that. I, I've seen that in uh, XDC's formula before. Yeah. I mean, that, 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 that's a good thing about Corium being, you know, a third generation blockchain. It's, it, and, and they literally have team members from like every one of these other chains that have seen the issues that come forth in all these other chains. So they're, they're just, you know, they got, you know, XRP is what, 13 years old, roughly. Like they have all of that, all of that data already in, in their favor to, to make something that is, <clears throat> is what it needs to be to, finish all of the moving parts for other ecosystems like XRP and really become the, 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 the hub of interoperability. Well, thanks for joining us, Mark, uh, before you uh, have to go for some, for some reason, I do, do want to give you the opportunity to get out the uh, message about uh, your promotion that you have on right now. Cause it's a, uh, it's, it's a pretty exciting one. Oh yeah. Um, shit. Totally forgot. I had so many other things going on here. Um, yeah, we uh, have partnered with uh, Blockchain Homies for a while now. We had some developers on our site that were supposed to have some good front-end stuff together, and they kind of got a little slack. I, two of the guys had some family issues pop up. Anyway, they, they didn't really um, keep things running as smoothly as we would have liked on the site, so we really didn't get a good promotion off for the Blockchain Homies. So what we decided to do was with all of the rewards that we've generated over the past months, six months or so, um, instead of keeping any funds at all, we decided to buy up a bunch of different Corium NFTs. So we, we do, we are live already with Corium NFTs. We also host XRP, ETH, AVAX, Binance Smart Chain, and, um, and Near NFTs. Um, but our main one, where our main advertisement is toward Corium and helping push the Corium ecosystem. So we bought a bunch of Corium NFTs. We bought a bunch of blockchain homies. We bought some of the Nebula nymphs and a couple other ones. And we are just giving them away for free throughout the month of December. Right now it's about three per day. Um, if there's a few more NFTs that are listed, we're mainly trying to buy NFTs with some sort of utility or community give back. Um, so yeah, we're just, we're just giving them away. Just saying, thank you for supporting us. Thank you for being part of Corium. And, um, you know, you could sell them, you could hold on to them and learn more about the projects that, that they're part of, um, whatever you want, it's your NFT, do, do as you please. But we, we definitely have the site that hosts them. You visualize them. Um, you could send direct messages in between each other. You can do, you can do all those great things. And, um, yeah, that'll be happening for the whole month of December in the next hour or so. I'll probably 
list uh, list the three or two new winners. I just use a little algorithm that pulls random people. Like somebody got lucky yesterday, and then they won two of the NFTs in a row. I think that was a camel camel dude or camel yeah camel dude something like that. He's a camel something. I'm, I think uh, he's here. Lover. Camel, camel lover. lover yeah. Camel lover. What's up, buddy? <laughs> Thanks you for all your support. It's midnight there. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're doing that. We're doing some other stuff. We got a little, we got a little something in the background brewing in between uh, me, uh, Corium Concepts, the, the, um, their, their validator, Mackenzie, and a few people. So we got a, we got a couple other cool new releases coming that are really benefit the community in terms of how to, um, how to help things operate. We're trying to, work on letting validators help also communicate a little bit better in between each other and promote each other a little bit because we, you know, we should be, it's not about being in the, in, it's not about being in the top three or top one. It's like, how can we get a little bit more decentralization in our ecosystem and then get more people willing to, to think about our future by saying, Hey, okay, I'm going to commit to staking this shit for a little bit longer. I'm not going to claim all my rewards. Maybe I'll claim some and I'll put some on the side. Um, we also have that feature where you can do that. You can auto stake your your crypto, but you can also say I, I only want to auto stake 80% of it and I want to keep 20% in my bag so I have a sell bag. So we have the auto stake variable feature. Um, it is it is we are going to be releasing it to some of the other validators soon. We're working on that as a as a partnership. So there's some pretty cool things to to look forward to. And um yeah, there's a couple other things in the work, but I don't want to. I don't want to take up too much more uh, of that space. Just know that we have been trying to be innovative and really as community based as possible. Oh, and the last thing is our NFT marketplace isn't like any other NFT marketplace. We don't. We don't make money. Yeah, we charge a fee every time an, an NFT is made, but that that fee goes back and is restaked. And then we used the earnings from those fees and then we reward back everybody in the community. That's it. There's after we reached, um, I, I think it was 1.5 million tokens staked in our, in our ecosystem from fees. Then we'll take 10% of that to just pay for our infrastructure, like pay for the domain hosting, pay for the, the, the virtual private servers and pay for, pay for the cost of the, of the validator and things like that. There's, there's still, you know, there's little, little fees, but in terms of money for myself or any other team members, that's all out of my pocket. And, and a couple other really badass uh, Corium uh, members that have, you know, helped see in the vision and then, and, and want, and want to see things succeed. So yeah, we are definitely a, a non for profit. All of our stuff is um, this year. We're actually almost done completing our, private member association and church where everything will run through 5013C organizations. And we all do nonprofit based stuff. So most more, more of the profits can go through in a, in a better way where they're, where they're not being taxed for just higher rewards for everyone in the community. So we can actually have a chance to be making some good passive income and not have to be worried about uh, working so much. We have a little bit more time actually doing the things that we love to do and, and need to do to, really make this a, a a better existence for everyone yeah i appreciate that you've been like i said you've been the one building on there since since day one early early doctor and and uh i've, I've always asked uh you know it's up to us as a community to, to head over to your site and and utilize it as much as possible to get the get uh, get the kinks worked out get the volume in the eyes over there just to to, to stress the system try and test it and and so we can have it uh have it have it be the the leading nft marketplace on the corium network because it's uh, been there since day one and uh you know it is it is your definitely blood sweat and tears you put into it it's the same same on our end you know we're uh as uh, i don't i don't think he's here anymore but uh, he's asking about running a validator so you know it's not it's not uh running it to make a profit you know it's uh, our team scott mckenzie um and marco and i you know like we're, we're just paying for the fees for the validator it's uh we're, we're trying to take everything that we can for rewards from that and just run it right back to the community just and that's just all part of you know the incentivization to build that community so it needs a base you know and people need to see that there's some value streams coming in and and so that's what we're here to do is try and bring those value streams together and 
and create that platform because uh, like you said if uh, we're, we're kind of doing a, a bit different approach i'm looking at it from a cooperative uh, standpoint um but um, that, that's the whole idea here is to give the community different uh, places to to interact and and different ideas for themselves to build you know because a lot of a lot of uh, ideas that I've had, you know, have definitely been affected by our for early conversations when I had an interview with you, Mark, and, and uh, you know, you're telling me your vision there. And you know, obviously I had mine and then, you know, all these, you know, with that technology, I can actually step that up a level and do this with it now, right? So that's the importance of us all having this forum to to sit down and talk about ideas and and uh, the privilege to, you know, talk to to you, a builder, you know, somebody that's running this uh uh, technology on the on the uh, network so we can you know what are your challenges what do you need what do you need from the community you know that's uh we need to be able to talk about these things so we can really uh you know wrap up the the development and growth yeah i appreciate it man i appreciate it having on thanks for everybody for sharing and just bring it together mm -hmm. i was really stoked to see even this many people on a on a podcast this uh or um yeah this early on a Sunday. Well, it's pretty early for me still. It's 1130. But um, yeah, I just want to say thanks again for all the support. Easiest way to ask us any questions is on is on Twitter. Um, and uh, yeah, reach out if you have trouble saying DM, just yell at me and say, damn it, open your messages again. Um, working on it, figuring all the tech stuff, you know, definitely have a two other lives I'm living trying to build a, a temple out here to help other people heal with some sound healing and feel other things. And so working on other life projects and other passions just like anybody else and we're just working on building the best community we can uh, i appreciate everything you're doing and uh, everybody else here so much aloha and talk with you guys soon thanks again miss you bro yeah like i said earlier uh mark's going to join us next week uh he'll be the feature of the uh the podcast next week he'll give uh better chance to get to know him and what he's building uh better there humble guy uh he has definitely a lot more to share and tell you about his project he's building there i guarantee you that uh, so i'm looking forward to that indeed i threw ash a mic there i don't know if he's seen it but just so you know ash you're welcome to come up anytime if you want got a lot going on uh he's got a raffle going on here nft evolutions pretty interesting other thing that's going on too uh, I shouldn't forget to mention um, next, uh, what is the date of that? It's Thursday the 7th, I believe it is. The Corium team uh, has a workshop on um, building on Cosm Wasm. And uh, so, yeah, they're going to have a workshop there. There's going to be $1,000 worth of Corium up for grabs for whoever builds the... Um, I think the best project or something like that. Uh, and then there's also a prize for whoever asks the best questions at the end of the session. Uh, this one does require an RSVP. So if you have an RSVP to that, uh, please do. Uh, you can find a link to that on the Corium um, X handle there for sure, or in the uh, Corium Discord because uh, it's it's a playground that's going to enable somebody that's even not necessarily uh, a coder or a developer to be able to uh, use their their tools in an, in an easy way to kind of like drag and drop um, and and build on the Corium network. So even if you're not a developer, uh, it's just a good way to learn a lot about um, the gears and and how this network works. So good opportunity, and plus you can win a thousand bucks worth of Corium. So. Uh, under 10 cents a token for Corium. That's a that's a nice bag of Corium up for grabs there. Saucy, glad you could join us. What's up, everyone? How you guys doing? How's everyone in the audience doing? Hope everyone's doing all right. What up, Saucy? What's up, my guy? How you doing? What's that, Mac? I said it's always good to see you, bro. Definitely, man. Likewise, likewise. Man, I just long day today. Glad I was able to join the space. I had some issues earlier, that's why I couldn't wasn't able to join earlier. Some I think that's why I think I think some other people even messaged me saying they couldn't join me some ever. So I, I don't know what's going on with Twitter, but I'm on the PC and talking to you guys right now. Yeah. Issues getting on, so the space would mm. be bigger than what it is. Mm. So interesting. 
Well, uh, you weren't here. You weren't here earlier, Sausage. Just so you know, I did let everybody know uh, earlier that uh, Corey and Punks uh, is going to be moving to our Discord. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I kind of threw your name out. If anybody has uh, any issues coming over there, you're the guy to talk to. And we also mentioned that there's also space for anybody that's got a project or uh, or a business or, or something that they need to advertise to the community. That's there's spaces there for that. And uh, you're you're the guy in control. So I just want to let everybody know, Saucy's the guy for Discord. He's done an amazing job cleaning it up and and uh, getting it looking good. And and uh, it's going to be a lot of growth ahead. I can see. And mm-hmm. he's the guy that's uh, doing that. And amongst on top of that. Um, a lot of great artwork that you see on on my posts comes right from that saucy account right there. And, so and, thanks, even, more, and even more that you know we can't currently talk about, but uh, yeah, much much more even than, than that. Thanks a lot, Matt. Thanks a lot, Chris. Man, I, what is it? Yeah, the Discord, everything's working fine. It's just um, all the what's called channels for Korean punks is everything is connect, um, all ready and done. If you want to join the Korean Punks channel, just send submit a ticket in the Discord, right? There will be a feature in the in the future where you know you connect your XRP wallet, your Zoom wallet, um, into the bot, right? The CAF bot, and it should automatically assign your role, the Korean Punks role, and the bot will um, scan your Zoom wallet for if you have the Korean Punks NFT. So it will automatically assign the role to your discord account so hopefully i can get that done soon but i just just a little bit of hiccup right now but yeah future looks right yeah <laughs> you, you may you may have just dropped some alpha that wasn't previously dropped so there there's some else of alpha from saucy damn okay mate, is that, that's my fault <laughs> was that meant to be said i don't know <laughs> it's all good it's yeah. all good no worries my bad my bad all right <laughs> all right you guys go ahead What's the space without a little alpha? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, forgive me, guys. Uh, I I didn't know that was not meant to be. No, that was not meant to be said. Not me. Oh, no, no it, it's good. It's uh, like I said, we're we're just trying to build this thing right for the community. We need everybody's help and input, and everybody in this room listening to this. Uh, I, I know good people want good things for for the the network, for us, the teams, the the different projects here. So no no worries dropping that here. So I'll see you all good. Anything else on the agenda to talk about? Uh, no, I think I think we covered it all. The main thing, like I said, we wanted to say that there's some changes coming with the punks, um, yeah. uh, and good things. You know, I think it's uh, you know it's uh, getting close to hopefully getting them onto the Corium network where I, I think they belong, and uh, I'm quite looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting. A few months ahead, just for the core network and whole and the community. We've been been a lot dropped in the last week to just from Bob and and uh, I know just stuff we're working on in the background. The community's going to a lot to be excited about moving forward into 2024. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, I want to talk about that a little bit. So how like most people are still bearish during this, <laughs> you know, supposed bull market. You know, what I mean, even now I think we already are in a bull market. You know, I feel like. You know, um, price of corium, you know, even though it's 10 cents right now, you know, we're going higher for sure. You know what I mean? 30 cents at least by January, I think, in my opinion. You know, so get ready I'm for re- that, guys. I'm ready. Uh, yeah, we are, man, we've been ready for the past two years. Yeah. <laughs> but hopefully, we see again, you know. Man, I, I feel like that thread by Bob recently, last um, last week. You know, that thread, I think, kicked off the price of Corium a little bit. You know, it just signaled that we're ready to go. That's what I think that's what Bob basically said in that thread. You know what I mean? Yeah, that held a lot of weight, you know. Yeah, exactly. Came out of nowhere just to tell tell us the bull one's on. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, why, why yeah. else would you do that, you know? Exactly. I mean, exactly. comes heavy like that. That was, you know, that was something else. Well, see, I, I I'm gonna play devil's advocate here because I was oh. I was listen, I was listening to some messaging from from Brad Garlinghouse and Stuart Alderati. It was only a week or maybe two weeks ago now where they both uh, were were responding to I think Jay Clayton's comments publicly. But uh, 
their comments both were, uh, I'm in disbelief. And I thought that it was interesting because for, for the last little while, I've been looking at the, the Wall Street cheat sheet there, and, and I'm just kind of wondering if we're in the disbelief phase. So that doesn't mean we don't have upside ahead of us, but it means that there, there could be a lot of downside before we go up again, if that's the case. Mm. Yeah. You know, whatever it is, you know, if it drops, I'll get more. If it goes up, I'll be happy. <laughs> exactly. I mean, most XLP community that watch those, watch those um, tweets, you know, when they see the word, word disbelief, they'll look at the, you know, before you said, Chris, the Wall, Wall Street cheat sheet, right? And then they will take the word literally, right? And they might even say, okay, we're going lower and completely wrong foot the entire XRP community. You know what I mean? I feel like that's why maybe Brad trying to do those. <laughs> like, I see we going higher. That's, that's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah. Well, it's a nice thing. Like, I honestly, I don't give it as much energy anymore. I'm not trading. I, I'm not looking mm. for a, an exit on my Corium. I'm here for the long term passive income, residual income. That's what I'm looking for. Me too, and, but I'm going uh, with Saucy on this one, Chris. Sorry, bro. Yeah, yeah. Well, don't worry. Don't worry. I got a lot of leftover shit coins from the last bull run that uh, I could <laughs> certainly use some movement on. <laughs> I, I, yeah, man. As long as we hold strong, you know, there's nothing really to worry about. None, none of this stuff about trading it, you know what I mean? You know, the people that know how to trade, they can, I think, you know, you need some extra confidence for that, you know. I mean, years of experience and to understand, have the confidence to control your emotions and all that stuff, you know. Uh, if you guys don't have the experience to trade and all this stuff, you know, just focus on holding, you know. What I mean, don't risk it. That's my yeah. Advice. I don't know. Trading, trading is a, you know, it's a tough enough game, but now, now you take the fact that you know a lot of the participants in the ecosystem, I'd say, possibly even a majority of the participants in the ecosystem now are using. Uh, like algorithmic trading and stuff like that, right? Bots, um, that's that's tough to work against, you know? So like if the odds were stacked against you before, I'd say nowadays it's even even more so. Exactly. I think it's so, a time to hodl these days, yeah. Like recently, I, th I think I saw a post saying um, $1.3 billion of shorts got liquidated as soon as Bitcoin hit 30, 39K. So, you know, like <laughs> trading, you know, when, when you see YouTubers start uh, do trading videos and live streaming trades and doing long positions, short positions, you know, you, you know, the audience is all going to place the same trade, you know, they, so you should just do the complete op opposite of what YouTubers and people on Twitter are saying, you know, just be until, careful. You know, until yeah. they flip that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, you know, these YouTubers, you know, they're here to wrong for you, you know, I mean, most of them, I don't know. There are some few that you know that are, here, that are genuinely here to help you, but most are just here to one foot you, you know, in the market. You know? So just be careful. Do your if you know how to trade, you know how to trade. But if you don't, please don't look base a trade on someone else's thoughts. Do your own independent investing and strategies. Right. That's it. Yeah. Good advice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. What, what else? <laughs> Most these I don't know what to talk about. I thought I said everything about Corium that needs to be said in podcast and Twitter spaces earlier. There's so much. We need some more um, words from Bob. You know, I mean, more. What could? What yeah. Else could hmm. Yeah, I wish I wish the team would work weekends. I'm always working during the week when they're on the, <laughs> on the weekday podcasts, and yeah. they're all they're they're obviously not working on the weekends to to come talk to us over here. But um, yeah, I I wish I could. Uh, I'm glad you, for everybody that doesn't know, Saucy, Saucy won a, a Corium hoodie from the uh, the solo space there for asking the uh, the best question. And uh, <laughs> that makes me happy because, man, like every time, like I'm at work and the odd time I can listen in a little bit, you know, catch bits and pieces here and there at least. But uh, the part I did hit here is like, hey, we're giving a prize out for the best question. Like, oh, man, I got so many questions, so many questions Super for that team. I, I wish I could get up there and ask them some questions. But one of these days, it'll it'll work out, I guess. Exactly, man. It's just, oh, oh, I just want a genuine question to be answered, you know what I mean? How would it affect the common man? What What's Corium going to do? You know, right now, everything's focused on enterprise, enterprise, ent enterprise, you know? How would it affect uh, my mom, or, for example, or my dad? How could they benefit from using Corium, you know what I mean? For everyday tasks, you know? So that's why I wanted to know, you know? 
So, yeah, yeah that's that, that. Yeah, that's it, really. So um, did did uh, they did they satisfy you? Like, did you get the answer that you're looking for there? Or what what's your your take with that? Oh, they, they answered the first part of it, but I think they <laughs> ran out. and forgot to answer the second part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that was waiting for the second part. The second part was the most important part, but you know, I think they were running out of time. They just wanted to leave soon, you know, soon. Yeah. yeah. That was a good question. Glad you won that. Thanks. And yeah. uh, glad, glad, you know, community, uh, that's our chance. You know, it's uh, when, when we get that team out uh, to ask them those, those good questions. And, and uh, it's uh, great, great to see them out more, you know, more accessible than they have been to, to get these updates and and see what's going on behind the scenes. We know they're working. I, I'm not sitting here wondering if they're not doing anything. Never have been, but it's just nice to see them out and about and and seeing some uh, forward momentum and and marketing. Exactly. You know, there's there was two like two uh, people from the Corium team that was speaking that was running the Corium account that was speaking. I uh, never heard that voice before. I don't know who that person was, but it's someone someone that we haven't heard of from the Corium team. So forgot the person's name but yeah uh, great to see yeah and, and they did say they're 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 actively recruiting uh you know people so i mean that's you know gotta get some people within the community up there too. see if they have any roles to fill keep an mm-hmm. eye and, and see what they need you know it's uh you know we we know this uh network and community better than anybody so if there's roles that our community members can fill it's important that we make sure they're known about. So, uh, you know, that could have been their way of, you know, extending that olive branch. So see what they need see if you got something to contribute. Exactly. Yep. Uh, mm, yeah. I mean, uh, was it? Yeah. The solo G space that man, uh, young Brenda and Laney, man, the way they carry their spaces is exciting to listen to, you know, so much energy, you know what I mean? Especially from Laney, it's crazy. Uh, the way they can ask the right questions, you know what I mean? Make sure you check their uh, Twitter spaces as well. So OG, I think, was it? Yeah, Twitter page. Every Thursdays, was it? Yeah, I think every yeah. Thursdays. Yeah. I think um, from the last place, uh, Fabio did mention something about coming back next week. So I'm not sure if they're going to be um, pulling up again. So look out for that as well. Mm. Yeah. Thanks yeah. Well. And uh, and then Michael and geez, I, I'm, I'm missing her name again. Uh, Alisana or something like that. Annalisa. I'm sorry. Annalisa, I think it is. Annalisa, that's it. Uh, yes, I think they're uh, I think they're going to be whipping up a podcast or two, too. So um you know that's that's just great because you know we need there's still still a lot of confusion out there still a lot of uh unknowns uh even within like the xrp community so i mean if we we haven't got the message out to the xrp community that tells us we got you know a lot of work to do to get the message out beyond the xrp community too so um happy to be you know doing my part in that but also really excited to see that uh, the team's really stepping that up too Yeah, exactly. I mean, man, I don't know if anyone's else said this to you, Chris, man, you've done a great job, you know, I mean, especially being a great speaker, you know, you, you, you're a very informative guy, you already reached thousands of subscribers on, on Instagram, not Instagram, YouTube and Twitter, you know, it's, yeah, it's crazy how far you come, you know, what I mean, it's from the days of core council to now, you know, you've done a great job, man, I, I hope you understand that, you know, be great, um, that's cool. Pat yourself on the back. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate the support. Yeah, it's been uh, eleven months to get to a thousand subscribers, and and quite a quite a story. And the, and like I've, I've said all along, the cool part about it is I've documented the whole story. Like it's all, I, I mean, I got hundreds of hours of video that never even hit the hit the uh, the YouTube channel. Just me capturing spaces and comments here and there. And I look forward to the day I can put the nine to five to bed and and uh, do this full time because like i i got content i got notebooks full of content so i just don't have the time you know i just don't have the time <laughs> yeah it's gonna be awesome when you get there chris it's gonna be mm-hmm. awesome and nobody pers- has that just like you're saying it's gonna be such a unique perspective you know yeah there's gonna be so many interesting stories to tell exactly it's like 
every day there's always content from Corey Concepts, you know, it's hard to keep track <laughs> every day, you know what I mean? Like, like it's crazy, it's crazy. Like I'm a machine. Sure. Right? It yeah, is, it's yeah. absolutely insane. Exactly. And this is like, you know, on top of everything else he does, which you guys don't know, I mean, I know more so because we talk daily, but uh, wow, that's all I have to say. Impressive. Exactly. You know, I'm pretty sure, man, they know, you know what I mean? The team, oh, they know what you work. <laughs> exactly. Bob especially knows, you know, pretty sure they know. And I'm pretty yeah, sure they agree. That's 100% guaranteed, yeah. It's just a matter yeah. of time. Well, when I met uh, Bob and Reza at uh, Corn over there, it was clear they they knew of my channel. So, I mean, that's that's all I could ask for. It's uh, meant to carry their message forward because I've bought into um, their vision and what they're trying to do here uh, without even knowing as much about it as they do. Uh, clear, I got a lot to learn. They, they, they drop us crumbs every now and then. I try and pick them up and put something together with it as best as I can. But... Uh, um, yeah, no, I, I, it's just, that's what it's about, right? Just getting the word out. Um, I, I've never got a letter saying, uh, don't do this, don't do that. So I'm not, not steering the ship too far wrong. And what I'm saying, that's the way I look at it. So just trying to grow it. I'm not trying to grow it for my bag. I'm trying to grow it for, for, to me, it's just a great idea. Community run blockchain, hundred percent airdrop, no VCs in play. Um, you know, if we don't give it away, if we don't sell our tokens away, this is our, our blockchain to to uh, continue to participate and, and govern and, and grow. You know, so that's exciting to me. So if we can build a good, strong community around that. Um, it's a powerful thing that a lot of projects don't and won't have that we do. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I was, yeah. I was just going to add that... Um, you know, when you met uh, Bob and Reza in, uh, at Coronova, you know, and, and spoke with them at that time. And then, you know, to see how far you've come, you know, mm -hmm. to this point. I mean, you know, obviously a lot of I, uh, like I said before, very impressive. Well, I'm just looking forward to the next year. I tell you, this 11 months flew by. The, the next year, I think, is going to be. 10 times as explosive as this past year has been. And, oh, and yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. It's just exciting uh, just for the stuff that we're building and, and trying to accomplish and the few things that we got in the oven. And Yeah, this, this um, is a real build yeah. up for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I've said many times, you know, for anybody out there, you know, maybe you're here speculating, trading, hodling, whatever the case is. Uh, I encourage you uh, participate, you know, um, if there's a NFT project that's interesting to you, reach out, get in their discord, get in their community, start chatting. I lurked around for years, like in uh, Zen lounge for years. I never said a peep. I was just there trying to get information, learn. Nobody knew I was even there lurking around. And, and, uh, you know, in hindsight, you know, I spent seven, eight years just lurking, you know, I could have been uh, building, participating. Yeah. And yeah. uh, it's far more rewarding. It's far. I, I don't even care about the charts anymore. It's far more rewarding on on the building and participating side. You embarrassed me a couple of times because you'd ask questions in the Discord, and I'm giving you answers, and like you're, you know, you're the mad scientist, and you know, I'm the rookie trying to tell you this stuff, and you're like, not exactly what I was asking, and it's like, and then come to find out all these things as I did. Oh, it was so funny. Yeah, it's uh, you know, everybody's got their own way that they got to this space and tie it all up uh maybe we'll wind her down here but this is kind of like what i said it's why i want to build that hub everybody's got a space to to share he said if i'm buying a cutting board i'd rather buy it for a cutting board from somebody i know if i'm buying um some some newly released music uh, i'd like to check out somebody in my community like articulate i'm still going to work on him and getting me a new show opener uh beat or something like that but so, I'll, I'll maybe buy buy one of his nfts for my show beat do it let's go let's go man that's what we're about and what i like about the quorum community you know we're we're already mentally interoperable so it's like we're not uh, such so much more maxis as per se look we're trying to build a hub we're trying to do things for us all to t partake and participate and interoperate so that's what I really appreciate about this community. It's like 
it's not segregated to the point where, you know, like don't mention this or don't support that. Like we're all trying to see the best for what this technology can be, bring, you know, for the wider society. But also if we're building, we want to support each other. It's not like something forced. So you always have my support, Chris, and anyone that's, you know, building and, and um, you know, the future is bright when we have this solid foundation. I, we don't even have nothing to worry about. I think that we already passed the worst, you know, in terms of this technology, this particular project and, you know, the things that we could probably face price wise and, you know, with the airdrops out of the way, pretty much, you know, we're pretty much past the worst. And I think that looking towards the future with the energy and the momentum we already have, this is something that's going to marvel the whole, you know, the universe, the whole cryptoverse. So, you know, um, congrats to everyone that is doing something. And I'm proud to be in this, you know, space and also in this, um, just engaging with you guys and building and supporting. This is something historic that we'll definitely reflect on and smile at, you know, like, look, I was there, you know, we're all there, but pretty much, as I said, I think we already passed the worst and we're just going to be the, you know, some of the leaders as well. Um, Cause we we're able to kind of pick out some, a project like this out the millions of tokens and projects that's out there and kind of like understand what's going on. So in the future, when, you know, things are a bit more established and stable and we're already at the forefront of the new financial system with the being holders and, you know, uh, owners in the new financial system being a part of this project and builders, you know, we're going to be leaders in this space and in, in, in the world in general. So, you know, we're also being entrusted with this as well. So, as I said, we have a solid foundation. Um, we've found, you know, a, a tribe in each other in, in, in this community. So, you know, let's keep building, let's keep supporting. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Well, I think we'll wind her down here for today. I'm going to do a, what did we learn today? Important thing. Uh, we learned that Camel Lover is going to be bringing the validator to the Corium network. Uh, I can't remember what he said it was called uh, in his language, but I think it translates to constellations in English. So watch for that. Uh, he, Camel Lover is a great community uh, leader, participant. Uh, he's going to need our support when he brings his validator online, like uh, Ralphie alluded to earlier. One of the biggest challenges running a validator is building that community and getting people to delegate on your network. Like I'm, I'm hoping and, and we're trying to work hard to get into that top 32. We're currently number 38, um, you know, but it takes a lot of work. You know, it's just not going to happen by itself. So um, Camel uh, has proven himself in this community. You know, we ought to support him uh, by by moving a little bit of our rewards around or whatever it takes to get him some some tokens on, on his validator to to show him that we support him. So uh, that's one of the things we learned. The other thing, uh, Corey and Punk's changes ahead. Um, we're going to uh, hopefully be bringing that to the Corium network here soon, and um, then also the Corium community DAO. Uh, early participants, we learned today that you're going to be getting a special NFT that uh, Marco has been working on that will entitle you to a Corium mainnet, Corium Punk, and its rewards in the future. And uh, I don't know, anybody else have anything would we learn today beyond that? No, must have covered it. Anyways, uh, again, next week we're going to be talking with uh, Rise NFT Marketplace and what's going on there like i said i know he was on here today and uh shared a lot but i guarantee you uh he's got a lot more going on with that marketplace than he alluded to, to here today he's giving away 100 nfts this month so check out risenft.com to participate in that mm -hmm. and um corium foundation or sorry the corium uh dev team has the uh, workshop this week cosm wasm December 7th, make sure you RSVP for that one. It's important you RSVP on this one. I don't think you had to on the previous ones. Um, yeah, that's about it. We're going to get together again next Sunday, uh, same time for episode number three. Appreciate everybody's support. Uh, does anybody have anything else before we go? Yeah, I think you covered it.
Right on, guys. Well, that's going to wrap it up. Thanks again. Thank you to everybody that came up to speak. Some of them have already left. Um, and thank you guys for joining us. If you're catching this on the replay, please join us next week. Same time, same place. Peace and prosperity to you all. Thanks, everyone. Cheers.